fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me, fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. I am back from New York Fashion Week, besties, and filled to the brim with fresh fashion knowledge just for you. As I attended several fashion shows to get the scoop on what designers are showing so you can get the first exclusive info straight from the runways. This week, it was a rough one, not going to lie. But let me tell you, you were worth it. It rained. The heat was like being in a brick oven. The air did not move. There was a Labor Day parade blocking Fifth Avenue, not on Labor Day, (laughs) where you couldn't cross over Fifth. The unions were marching with middle fingers up in the air, holding signs about pay cuts. We will not be silenced. And I did see a float or two, but there was not one single person. I mean, literally not one watching the parade. No one was cheering. No one was even looking. It was not happy. It was bizarre. Now, I did see a group of guys in kilts playing the bagpipes. Maybe they have a union too. Not sure. I don't know who approved this or what happened, but... When it interferes with my fashion social schedule, then we have a problem. However, thanks to the kindness of Fern Malice, who is the queen of Fashion Week, she's the one who actually started it back in the 1980s. This is her 30th anniversary, by the way, going to the shows. She was kind enough to let me pal around with her for one of the days. Winning! New York Fashion Week, September 2023 is on deck for today, so don't go anywhere. Flying off the press at Amazon Books is Stop Making These Fashion Mistakes by yours truly. Is your image holding you back? Is it? This captivating and quick style guide can save you instantly and break the cycle of feeling like you look just okay and good enough to feeling proportionate, empowered, and self-confident. It describes in detail top fashion and style mistakes that people make without even knowing it. While learning these short style principles, you will soon understand why keeping your closet out of chaos, wearing the correct fitting undergarments, and dressing according to your lifestyle, your age, and your body type can do nothing but evolve your personal style. Getting dressed is something that should add joy and confidence to your everyday life, not bring you down. You too can have complete control over the message you're sending to the world by using style as a tool to get ahead in life. Not every day is going to be a home run. We know that. But you do have the option to opt in and dress the way that makes you feel like authentically you. This book is the first step in your style evolution to get unstuck. I can't think of a better way to make your outside match your inside with stop making these fashion mistakes. Get your copy now on Amazon.com. Just type in Holly Katz book or stop making these fashion mistakes and it will come up for you. It's about a 15-minute read and makes a fabulous gift, let's be honest. Shout out this week to Melissa, who wrote in asking about bags. Jessica wrote in, thank you, Jessica, and my friend Anna, who told me she purchased the book. All three of you guys did, so shout out to all of you. Anyone else, please drop me a DM or an email and let me know so I can give you snaps for buying my book. I'm so happy that y'all are loving it. I'm getting texts, pictures, emails, even a few videos. I can't thank you enough. I'm loving this journey for all of you. And I love seeing you with the book. If you send me a pic or a DM, you will get a shout out. Yes, you will. Okay, I got to New York at the beginning of the week and spent some quality time alone setting intentions for the week and scripting out what my week was going to be like. Look at me go. Then I had my first show on Thursday, which was the Supima Cotton Design Competition hosted by Jeremy Scott. Um, Holy fashion balls. He used to run Moschino, but now he has his own line and is winning awards left and right like they are going out of style. 
to make you understand better what this is, I want you to think of like a project runway type of competition. There were eight finalists from design schools all around the country, including the Art Institute of Chicago, Rhode Island School of Design, and of course, Parsons, Drexel University, Kent State University in Ohio, and many more. They were only allowed to use five different fabrics to create five looks out of knit jersey, denim, shirting, velveteen, and twill. So they each got five fabrics for five looks. Then each person was assigned a faculty mentor to help them while Bibhu Mahupatra, one of my favorite designers, he is an incredible women's wear designer and he shows every year at Fashion Week. He is always the mentor for all the students every year. The goal, of course, is to show and feature the cotton fabric made from the Supima cotton. And it's just unbelievable what can be done now when designing a garment. The way that these students manipulate the fabric, the laser cutting, the dyeing of their own fabrics with natural dyes, the ruching, tucking and gathering and the beading and the painting, the fabric painting. There's just so many things that you can't even imagine that they brought to life in their collections. I had the pleasure of sitting next to Taku Yim, who was the winner of last year's competition hosted by Christian Siriano and Coco Rocha, supermodel, which I was in the audience for as well last year. He's now working at luxury designer Tom Brown. Um, yes, such an unbelievably talented guy. And he's very humble and very quiet, to say the least. He sat down next to me and I was like, oh my God, hey. And he was like, hey. Um, And then he told me he won last year. I was like, what? Anyway, we had a nice time. The winner of the contest this year was Carla Pierini from Drexel University, and she is a Venezuelan immigrant. When they announced her name, her parents were sitting on the second row, kind of like a little bit to my left. I mean, they jumped out of their seats to the ceiling. They were jumping up and down, laughing, screaming, crying, that I started crying. It made me so happy to witness their genuine reaction. She won 10,000 bucks and her name on the fashion map. Well, they all have great careers ahead of them, let's be honest. But Carla, loving this journey for you and cannot wait to interview you. You just don't know you're going to be interviewed by me yet, but I'm going to put that in the universe. Thursday night, I ended up going to the fashion talks at the 92nd Street Y where Fern Malice again conducts her interviews with very influential designers, models, and people in the fashion industry. She interviewed Gabriella Hurst. Fun fact, for those of you who watched the inauguration of President Biden, she designed the look for Dr. Jill as it was made from all dead stock fabric and it was embroidered with all the flowers from all 50 states. It's now a piece in the Sonian Museum. Fucking wow. I mean, wow. Gabriella grew up on this gigantic ranch in Uruguay and started out doing private label for free people and anthropology, which is actually the same company. She got started when she was at a trade show and she actually slid in one of her designs with the others and she got some orders on it. And then her boss was like, "Um, okay. (laughs) Then she became the creative director of the brand Chloe, which I also love. She's been all over the world, was bilingual at age 12, lived in Australia and the U.S. and everywhere else. She is really stunningly gorgeous in person. I think she used to be a model. And I got to say hello to her. So that was my excitement for the night. And I took the day off on Friday and I was so happy to do nothing. So Gabriella Hurst, I do have one jacket by her. This is not my last piece by Gabriella Hurst because there'll be more, but To see her in person and hear her story was really fabulous and great. Saturday, I went to the Jonathan Cohen presentation at the Chelsea Hotel, which was amazing. I'm a client with them. And if you checked out my IG stories this week, their new collection was out in full force. Jonathan creates the artwork for most of his prints, and he has a very small, curated, purposeful collection that works for anyone of any age. I mean, his clothes are ageless. A presentation is kind of like a party. It's not a runway show. The models are standing around. It's called freeze modeling. So you can walk up to them and then you can really see the garment details and touch them if you'd like. 
it's much more intimate because you can meet the designers and talk to them. I mean, his parents were there. Um, his creative director, Sarah, was there. Her parents were there. So it's just a nice way to meet them in person. You can ask about the clothes and you just really get to know them and what their intentions were behind the garments instead of just watching, you know, models down the runway. The models walk past you on a runway show and then that's a wrap. So a lot of designers opt for a presentation because it's not only a lot less expensive, but then they get to know the people that are there, make connections with them, which is a really great way to sell clothing because that is the ultimate goal is to sell. Florals are really his thing. And he's starting making shoes, which really makes me happy. And let's just say I might or might not have a pair of boots on the way coming from their new collection. Also, their dress, which is what I think was their signature pattern, they had coffee cups made with the same pattern. It was really cute. For more on Jonathan Cohen, stay tuned for my stepson Zach's rehearsal dinner dress for me, as my dress will be coming from them, Jonathan Cohen, as they're making it right now as we speak. I love to buy from really nice people and support small brands, Obvi, and that's what they are. We were at the Hotel Chelsea, and I'm killing time before the Proenza show at 12. And, you know, we were only 15 minutes away. And in walks Fern Malice. And I was like, hey, where are you off to from here? And she was like, I'm going to the Proenza Schooler show. Would you like a ride? I was like, uh, I sure would. And that was the universe looking out for me. And God, Due to the fact that there was a Labor Day parade, not on Labor Day, <laughs> and her driver was charming the cops on the street. He's actually law enforcement. He was like flashing his badge to let us cross Fifth Avenue. I mean, the Proenza Schooler Show was like trying to get out of a maze. It took us 40 minutes to get there, and it was 15 minutes away. Anyway, Proenza Schooler was next, and this is one of my top designers that I wear and I love. It was at the Phillips Auction House, which was just a blank room with super bright fluorescent lighting. The clothes were very simple this season with lots of flowy fabrics and neutral colors. This is a brand that I highly recommend to people as the lines are super modern and very unique. You don't see anything like it on most people. They also have a slightly lower price line called Proenza White Label if you're interested in trying it. This is a great option, too, to see if you like the fit and the aesthetic of the brand without spending a ton. Love the girls who work there and also love buying from a brand with such great customer service. After Proenza, we went to have a very overpriced fancy lunch at the Armani store. Just got that memo that there's a restaurant on the top floor of the Armani store. Food was delicious and very fancy. I ordered a salad for an appetizer. And I was like, um, this is the best salad I ever had. So we ate, we talked, we showed pictures, we had fun. And I will definitely be going back to the restaurant at the top of the Armani store. The Couples, Rag and Bone, Veronica Beard, Saks, Bloomingdale's. It's possible to save money on these luxury brands and many more. Here's the secret. Shop with Rakuten to get the best deals on the designers you love. You can get cash back at over 4,000 stores, so you can save on the occasional splurge and on everyday items like beauty and home essentials. Plus, you can stack cash back on top of other deals like store sales, loyalty programs, and credit card points. With Rakuten, you know you're maximizing your savings. The math is simple. The more you shop, the more cash back you get. Rakuten is free to join and easy to use. So get started at Rakuten.com or download the Rakuten app today. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. The traffic in New York is always bad. I mean, always. But I have never seen it as bad as it was this week when I was there. Again, because I was in the car with Fern, we went down past Houston, like a few blocks way downtown from kind of like super way downtown near Canal Street. And we went to the Sally LaPointe show which I have not seen Sally LaPointe since I first started going to Fashion Week about six years ago. It was the best show of the week, hands down. It was outside on the corner and out comes this fucking drum line, which was so badass. I was loving it. 
Then the clothes came out as the models walked down the sidewalk. Best line ever. She doesn't know it yet, but the Holly train is about to roll up in there to start my Sally LaPointe journey. Just saying. It was a little streetwear, you know, centered, to be honest. But guess what? I'm going to work it out. Okay? I'm going to work it out. She had a lot of colored leather, white and silver, and chain mail, and the silver thigh-high boots. I mean, I would definitely classify it as more street-centered evening wear. Again, the boots. Like, I can't with those silver boots. And being in the street, it was for sure made it even more downtown chic. So listen to this. After the show, it started to sprinkle a little bit. I mean, it was so overcast and cloudy. We were like, oh my God, I hope it doesn't rain. Hope it doesn't rain. The minute the show broke and it was over, it started to drizzle just a little bit. So we went across the street to a store. And as I'm walking and crossing the street, here comes Sally LaPointe out from like where the models were came out. She was like chilling, hanging out, talking to some people. And I asked her for a picture and we took a selfie together. Um, hello again, winning for me. So happy. And she was super nice and had like real people energy. You could tell if you know what I mean. Like she wasn't a pretentious bitch. She was so kind and so nice. And she looked so happy and she was talking to some people and she was so gracious. So um, that just calculated in a sale for me. It pays to be nice to people. Back into the car we went and headed on over to the Pat Bow Show, which I've attended the past few seasons. Pat Bow stands for Patricia is her first name. Not sure if her last name. I got to look it up. But it's the first two letters of her first name, the first two letters of her last name. And she makes beautiful swimwear and clothes for very, very skinny people. Okay, let's be honest. Now, I know that sounds bad, but she is Brazilian, if I'm not mistaken. So there is that. Her clothes are crocheted and beaded and very tropical. She makes beaded pants and flowy evening gowns that are like cruise and resort worthy. She also creates gorgeous swimsuit cover-ups with fringe and unbelievable colors, the richest colors, which I mean, I can totally get behind that. The best thing about going to the Pat Bow Show is that Allie Love is there every year. And for all of you Peloton folks out there, I said hey to her. And she is so sweet and just as pretty in regular clothes, in this case, Pat Bow clothes, as she is in her videos. And for those of you who don't ride Peloton, she is one of the instructors. It was really great to see her in person for the second year in a row. I really wish that I could wear a Pat Bow swimsuit. But considering I need full ass coverage, I'm thinking that's like kind of a pipe dream, let's be honest. But who knows? I've never tried it, okay? So that was the end of the day for me as I said goodbye. And thank you to Fern for helping me get around in the chaos. I was truly, truly grateful. I came into Sunday with Del Scott, who is a fashion designer out of Philadelphia, went to her show and sat right next to her mama. Okay. I'm not sure if this is her first time she's ever shown, probably not, but she does have beautiful evening wear, gorgeous collection of dresses, short and long, both with beading and ruffles. She had two dresses that I absolutely loved. One was hot pink, very low cut with a vertical, like up and down ruffles. She put it with a really wide black belt because the ruffles were vertical. It literally looked like a hot pink cotton ball. I loved it. Next, she had this very, very bold purple, bright purple two-piece top and skirt with a banded waist. And this top was one shoulder crop top with a flower on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Take one of those, please. I did not get a chance to meet her, but I am going to interview her on the podcast. I was very grateful to go to her show. She had really nice goodie bags. Her whole family was there. I met her kids, her husband. See, when you go to a small show, it's just nice because you really get to know the family and it makes it more exciting. So I was really, really happy for her. That night was Sergio Hudson. I saw him for the first time last year and he blew me away. Now, Sergio Hudson is very famous. He is one of the top black designers right now and he designs clothes for curvy girls. Now, that is not his aesthetic. He just does it. And I'm telling you, his clothes fit me so well. I have that 
purple suit. I don't know if y'all have seen me in it. That's Sergio Hudson. And then if you check out my other stories, I have a cheetah print Sergio Hudson suit now that's giving me life. Okay. All of his pants are wide leg. They all are high waisted. Some of them are stretched. Some of them are not stretched. They all have matching jackets. His clothes are made for me. Big, big fan. We're going to be best friends. I can totally see us having lunch together one day. Sergio, if you're listening, I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to have lunch with you. And I can't wait to be best friends with you. Just saying. And I'm going to wear my cheetah suit so you can see it. Okay. That was Sunday night. Monday was Global Fashion Collective. Okay. This PR agency, they show about three to five designers. And this year it was Sound of Ikebana, Why So Serials, <laughs> and Satomi El Beso. It's usually Asian designers or some kind of designers from Asian descent. But there was one who wasn't, and that was Meta Vocus. That was two women. And actually, they were my favorite. The Asian designers, I mean, they were so different and unexpected. Some had instruments and they were dancing. One designer had silk clothing with prints that he made on his computer program. And each model actually held an iPad of the print that they were wearing. And it was moving on the screen that they were holding in addition to the screen behind them. I've never seen anything like it before. It was very interactive. All in all, it was super, super wackadoo, <laughs> but it was nice. It was a really nice break from the seriousness of all the other shows. It was great to see people have fun with it and actually do something different. I love the Global Fashion Collective. It is newer talent, but I like supporting small brands. So it was fun for me. Tuesday, Sylvia Tarachi, one of my favorite designers. She has a showroom with her merchandise taking appointments. And she was there, totally got to meet her and take a picture with her. Winning again. Loving that journey for me. I also had on one of her outfits, which I'm going to put on the Pinterest board, by the way, that I made for you this week. It's a surplice wrap silk balloon sleeve blouse with a matching skirt. But the V is in the front with the waist detailing in the skirt that makes your waist look super skinny. The cut of the skirt is very flattering for someone with a curvy body type like me or somebody who has hips. Loved meeting her. Loved seeing the new collection. So many things that I want. So many. She had a pink drop waist brocade dress. She had the same thing in a two-piece, a top, and a skirt. She does these rope necklaces that can be worn as, I think, as belts too. Very creative. Really love a designer that finds something unique to wear in a way that no one has thought of before. I know people have used ropes before, but these are colored, twisted ropes. They're just really sexy and very cool. I ended the day with Bach Mai, who is a fashion group international. That's a group I'm part of. Rising Star Award recipient. Basically, he's new according to the fashion industry standards. And this was his very first show. What an honor to see his very first collection ever. Good for him. Go Bach. I've met him before at the Rising Star and he is super humble and very down to earth. His clothing was everything. Love the A-line turquoise mini skirt. Um, hook me up with that. The floral abstract print dresses and the tool. I mean, the fucking tool. So much tool. The room was very dark and mysterious and the lighting was like extra. I mean, really cool. I mean, it was like a Broadway show up in there. Just wait till you see what I wore to this show, the Bach Mai show. I wore my silver Bach Mai pants that have oversized legs with a pleat down the side. I mean, it looks like a skirt, but they are sick. These pants, check out my Instagram for pictures of all of my outfits that I wore all this week. I gave it my all this year and I wanted to reach beyond my normal fabulosity quotient. And I hope I did that. Now, I'm soaking it all in. I can't wait to tell you about the trends and what to look for for fall 2023. That's coming up next week. I did meet some potential interviewees that will be coming up. To, so stay tuned for that. And then in the coming weeks, I have a book signing at my bestie Chloe's new store. Her store is called Madison and Fifth in Savannah, Georgia. 
So I will be in Savannah at her store opening on September 22nd, selling my book and supporting women-owned businesses because that's what we do. We love women-owned brands and businesses. Thank you so much for listening this week. And don't forget to write to me. Please write to me. Hit me up. I'll be waiting for you. Hope you guys have a fabulous, fabulous fashionable week. And y'all keep it real, okay? Let me know what you want to hear. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think about the book. Waiting to hear about feedback on that. And if you know someone who would like a copy of the book or who needs the book, it's a great gift. Y'all have a great week. Bye.